Chuck, if you go ahead and put up that first slide. It's a passage of scripture, uh, one of my favorites, <laughs> comes from 2 Peter 3 and 18. Grow in the grace and knowledge of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. I would encourage you to go back and read that entire chapter. But this is one of my favorite passages of scripture. And it's a good scripture to begin this talk on growth, Christian growth through study. You remember in our first talk, Priority, we learned that humans have the freedom and intellect necessary to rise above instinct alone and to set priorities for our lives. And I hope you've set some priorities. Uh, you've made a conscious decision to set some priorities to grow in grace. Uh, we also learned that if you don't set your own priorities, then others will set them for you. Correct? It's going to happen. It follows then that study is a primary means of growing towards our priority as Christians. The message on piety, we learn that we live a life of piety when we make a relationship with God our life's top priority. And that's so important. When we come to a Christian commitment, we have a limited knowledge of what that commitment really means. I remember when I first accepted Jesus Christ as my Lord and Savior, uh, I, I had a lot of zeal and not a lot of wisdom. Does that make sense? And so I burned people out and I burned people up, I'm sure. But as I grew in grace and the knowledge of the Lord Jesus Christ, I was able to temper zeal with knowledge and it made me a more effective Christian so when we come to a Christian commitment we have not we have a limited amount of knowledge of what it really means to to be committed to Christ so study then helps us to mature into the fullness of that commitment and it doesn't happen overnight 
I've been studying. I, I was just, I, I keep this Bible on the pulpit. This is the first Bible that was given to me after uh, I was uh, gave my life to the Lord. 1985, it was given to me by Angie's uh, mom and dad. And it's, it's wore out. It's torn. It's I, I guess a few pages are missing. They're all over the place. Uh, but this was the first Bible uh, that I had owned. And it was through the scripture that I've come since 1985 to have a greater appreciation for God, my faith, the world, my brothers and sisters in Christ. Why? Because through the Bible, through God's holy word, the Holy Spirit gives me wisdom and understanding. I don't get it right all the time, but I get it, I get it more right now than I did years ago. And that's helpful in my growth. Because Christian growth through study suggests a willingness to change and mature. Hopefully that's what all of us are doing. We're allowing our age and the wisdom and our study of Scripture, our relationship with God, which should be a top priority, to change us into a better version of ourselves, actually to a better version of who Jesus really should be in our life. So study suggests a discipline and a willingness to inform our desires, our emotions, our intuitions about the Christian life. And this is so important. Growth through study is an important step of the process by which we move closer and closer to imitating Jesus, who should be the model for our lives. Study is not just an intellectual exercise, but the total experience of seeking and encountering and appropriating the truth so that we can live a full life in Jesus Christ, a life fully lived in grace. I love that passage of scripture out of Romans chapter 12, one of the first passages of scriptures that I highlighted in my Bible. Now you have to understand when I first got this Bible, it was a Christmas gift and it was wrapped up and it had a nice little old box. And so I would, before I would read the Bible, I would wash my hands Take it out of the box was real cut. I didn't lick my fingers or, you know, because I didn't want to stain the, soil. yeah, soil, thank you, the pages. I wanted to keep it clean because it, it was just precious. And it was gold bound. Man, that thing was beautiful. It's just wore out now. And then I remember the first time I brought it to church, sat on the front row with uh, my girlfriend. <laughs> And uh, she took my Bible and she, you know, she had put on makeup or she had adjusted her makeup. So she was flipping the pages and I could see the <coughs> smudges of makeup on the pages. <laughs> we had a talk. <laughs> after the church was over, we had, you know, after I put it back in my little case and stuff like that. And she looked at me real funny and she said, a Bible is supposed to be used and broke in and marked in and read and highlighted and paper clipped and, and you know, and, and I realized that she was right, which she's been right a lot of times in my life when I thought I was right her. <laughs> but you learned that through truth. And so this old book, became a lifeline for growth. One of the first passages of scriptures that I highlighted in this old Bible is this passage coming up right now out of Romans. It's Romans chapter 12. Paul says, 
I beseech thee therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that you present your bodies, what? A living sacrifice, holy and acceptable unto God, which is your reasonable act of worship. You can tell I spent a lot of time in this scripture. And then the second verse, which deals with growth through study, Paul says, and do not conform to the pattern of this world. What does it mean? To the thinking of this world. Don't have your mindset into the unhealthy thinking of the world standard, but be what? Transformed. How? By the renewing of your mind. Then you'll be able to test and prove what God's will is, his good, pleasing, and perfect will. In Romans 12 and 2, the Apostle Paul said that we are transformed by the renewing of our minds, and that's so important. Because this next slide uh, has to do with what I call stinking thinking. Now, I didn't come up with that word. Somebody did years ago, and I read it, and it stuck with me all these years. Stinking thinking has to do with if you have the same old thinking, you'll have the same old results, right? That's true, isn't it? And we just find ourselves in this same cycle of defeat. Paul says, in order to break from the patterns of stinking thinking in this old world that our minds have to be transformed and the only way that they're going to be transformed is by the renewal of our minds through the word of God. Amen. Not a self-help book, not doing yoga, which I think I'm going to learn to start doing. Yeah. I, I don't know why, I just think I need to. <laughs> and so each of us then needs a unique plan for study. We renew our minds by applying our minds to those things that are most worthy. Jesus said that the knowledge of the truth will set you free. And you'll be free indeed. So the aim of study for a Christian goes beyond our human desire for information and knowledge that is important. But to seeking deep spiritual wisdom to truly develop the mind of Christ and to seek deeper transformation of our hearts, of our minds, and of our lives. That's the goal of Christian study. Now, each of us need a, 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 needs a unique plan to study to enable that growth towards Christian maturity. And so, if you put up the next slide, that's why I keep putting up this picture of a three-legged stew, a life lived in grace. You remember in the life of piety, we learned that we must make a life of piety, a relationship with God, our life's top priority. And so in piety, we learn that we give our what to God? Our hearts to God. In growth through study, we'll learn that we give our minds to God. Next week, Christian action, where we give our hands and feet to God. We need all three to have an adequate foundation for a life lived in grace. Now, you've heard me talk about uh, the first six months that I got saved, I had this Bible and I was dangerous. Everywhere I went. In, in the back, I was just looking uh, as the choir was singing. Uh, you inspired me, not that I wasn't interested. But I, I just looking at my Bible. And I had written in the back of my Bible, how to win people to Christ. Put that right. And then I did the old Romans road because what little religion I had was Baptist. You'd appreciate that if you're Baptist because you, you know about the Roman road, right? Yes. yes. And that's how you go through the scripture and you sit down with someone. I would be in the line at a grocery store in Mount Vernon, Alabama. I'd have my, that's the answer. I'd take my Bible into the grocery store because while I'm waiting in line, 
I'm reading scripture. Why? Because I want someone to say, what are you doing? Well, I'm reading the Bible. Did you know that Romans 3 and 10 said, for all of the <laughs> sin and fallen short of the glory of God, and I'd go through the Roman road and I'd say, would you like to accept Jesus Christ? As <laughs> you and they're putting groceries in the back and they have to get going, and I'm following them out the door. <laughs> Now I got a lot more wisdom, see, to temper that zeal that I had, um, so I didn't put people off. And you know, stranger danger, stranger danger. <laughs> I stumbled across a passage of scripture in Jeremiah 15 and 16. If you would put that up, I love this. Jeremiah 15 and 16 says, "Your words were found, and I ate them." See, I can identify with these. So I love passages of scriptures like this. And your words became to me joy. Every time I think of that, I think of Brother Bill McDermott. I don't know why. Your words became to me joy and the delight of my heart. For I called, I am called by your name, O Lord God of hosts. David said, and I love it in Psalms 19 and 10, David says, How sweet are your words to my taste, O Lord, sweeter than honey to my mouth. And so the word of God became sweet to me. Amen. And I would eat from the word of God. And it was from that eating from the word of God that gave me nourishment and strengthened my Amen. soul. And my commitment and my service and informed my discipleship and gave the Holy Spirit something to work with in my brain. Do you understand what I'm Amen. saying? So that when I heard the voice of God say, Riley, I want to use your life in ministry. Follow me. I Amen. said, yes, sir. Where are we going? And I'm here. And I'm so glad I listened. As Jeremiah ate the words of the Lord, so we too, as we approach Scripture, can eat from the Word of God for the purpose of awe, for the purpose of transformation, and for the purpose of endurance. So that leads me to the next slide. Why do we study God's Word? Well, in me, it began with developing a sense of awe and wonder of who God is. Because in my stinking thinking, I thought God was this cosmic cop up there looking down from heaven, just waiting for me to mess up so he could make my life miserable. Hello? I begin to read the scripture. I begin to learn about the God of scripture, the God of history, the God who created all, the God who in Christ came and redeemed me. And it began to give me a sense of awe and wonder of something greater than I. And even in the presence of the Lord, like Isaiah, I say, woe is me for I am undone. Because I'm standing in the presence of something holy and something that I need in my life. And so I began to have this encounter with the God of the universe who began to produce a sense of awe and wonder and reveal himself to me in his glorious majesty, unlike anything else I have ever experienced in the world. When I accepted Christ and began to read scripture, the Lord began to open my eyes and the scales of what I was walking in, darkness. I began to see light. I began to see people in, in, in a different way. I began to see the circumstances in my life, how God was using that to draw me unto himself and to transform my life so that he could use me for his purposes. Amen. I mean, it just doesn't get into I was listening to a pastor on the radio this morning as I was coming into church. And it, and it was one of those prosperity God. God has so much more in store for you. God's going to open up the riches of heaven. God's going to pour this into your life. God's going to do this and God's going to do that. And I said, yeah, and, and you may have to suffer the rest of your life. And God used that to bring him glory. Amen. Come on, Pastor. Yes, it's true. Don't preach half a gospel. Preach the truth. 
I'm sorry, that wasn't in my notes. <laughs> Holy Scripture is how we come to better know the God who has called us to himself. And to be sure, grow through study the Bible. Reading the Bible won't always invoke degrees of awe, right? Uh, it's not good. You know, sometimes it does. Sometimes it hits me. Most of the time it's just, oh, okay, yeah, well, I read that and studied. And, yeah, that's good. But through the work of the Holy Spirit, God can and yes. God does draw us into a deeper knowledge Amen. of himself that can result in what? Greater Truer worship of Him. Amen. And that's important. And a greater love and appreciation for what God is doing in your life. Amen. In scriptures, we marvel at God's power and His wisdom. And we are confronted by His love and His sovereignty. Therefore, one proper motivation for reading the Bible is to be drawn into that deeper knowledge, that understanding, that deeper awe, that deeper appreciation of love and gratitude for the author of the one who wrote the book. In that sense, we can say that the Bible is profoundly relational and it draws us into deeper communion with God our Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. And I want to tell you, it just doesn't get any better than that. And that is where transformation takes place, which leads us to, no, no, stay on the next, uh, on that slide. I'm sorry. Uh, transformation. What, what are we being transformed into? Hopefully not just a better version of ourselves, but being transformed into the image and to the mind of Christ. That's the best version of yourself that you can hope for. In addition to drawing uh, into a deeper relationship with the triune God, another goal of studying the Bible is to be transformed into the image of Christ. And then there's endurance, endurance to run the race. You know, the older I get and the, and the more suffering I experience, I gone through a lot of suffering in life, but I've gone through a little, have you? Uh, the more miraculous I find the doctrine of the perseverance of the saints. You need to read that sometime. It's a doctrine. It's there. This Matter of fact, if you come on Wednesday mornings at 1 o'clock, I have a Bible study. I'll teach it to you. This old world and the trial and the hardships, along with chronic suffering, can I get a witness in the house? Amen. Wears us down over time. It is often invisible to others, but we bear it day after day. Life can bring deep sorrows. It brings trials. It brings losses, and some of which we must endure constantly, as opposed to a painful season that comes and goes. Some folks deal with those things every day of their life. And not only that, but we have an enemy, Satan, who slanders and accuses us. Such suffering and opposition can chip away at our desire and ability to keep going, to keep trusting, and to keep worshiping our Lord. Thus, another motive for reading the scripture and knowing of the God of the universe, the God who created you and formed you, is to be strengthened with endurance so that you don't give up. Amen. Stay in the race. Yes. The Lord's blessing is upon your life. That Amen. is true, Pastor. You may not win the lottery. Oh, I'm sorry. Y'all don't play the lottery, do you? Now, the ones that laughed, you didn't win last night, did you? 1 Corinthians. Next slide. Do you not know that in a race all winners run? The runners run. But only one gets the prize. Run in such a way as to get the prize. I like what Paul has to say. Because in Hebrews, if you go to the next passage of Scripture, 
the author of Hebrews says, therefore, since we are surrounded by such a great crowd of witnesses, let us throw off everything that hinders and the sin that so easily entangles and let us run with perseverance the race marked out for us. You're in a race. Okay? <clears throat> what do you need to do? Well, fix your eyes on Jesus, the pioneer and author of your faith. For the joy set before him, he endured the cross scorning its shame and set down at the right hand of the throne of God where he has power. Consider him who endured such opposition from sinners so that you would not grow weary and lose heart. Endurance. Scripture teaches us that we are kept by the power of God, that God uses his word to encourage us, to shape us, to form us. And the fact that we can make it through this tedious obstacle course of life in the world, in the flesh, in the devil, shows that the power of God at work in our lives is much more than any impressive ministry or extraordinary gift that we may have. The power of God's word at work in your life will set you free. Now, uh, I'm going to skip a page because our time is done. I want to share with you just a, a tip or two. Next slide, if you would, it goes right back to our scripture. First thing that we have to do, and I'm closing with this, decide to make Christian study a priority. Remember, whatever you give your time, your money, yes. your attention, and your passion, that is your priority. Amen. Unless Christian growth and study become a priority for you, you will mostly, mostly like you will develop an attitude of hit and miss and mostly miss. Build a study library. I have a few books that I bought this morning. I start out with a uh, study Bible because it has a little commentary in it. But then I have other commentaries like the New Interpreter's Bible. Uh, if you want to go a little smaller, Matthew uh, William Barclay has a wonderful commentary that I use as an aid to help. So when I do my study, when I do sermons, I have a Bible dictionary. You know, a lot of this you can get online nowadays, but I still like the old-fashioned way of having my books out on my desk. You ever come into the room when I'm doing this? You see Bibles and books and stuff. Why? Because it, I just like the discipline of, of, of opening the book and studying. And it leads me to this page and that page and that discovery and this discovery. And so make study a priority in your life. Uh, so find Set out a time, carve a time where you can study and learn and grow and make that a priority and have a space. I like my office. Some people may have a little office or study in their home. It might be in your recliner, in your living room, and you got your Bible and you got your book open. How many have that? Right? You know where it is. It's always in the same place. It's to your go-to place. Your time may be in the morning with that cup of coffee. Oh, but the word of God. And I have a little, dis uh, what, what, what are the little books out here we have? Devotional, Devotional books. It's called something I keep forgetting. A maroon. Thank you. We have them. And people have them sometimes. How many have one stuck in their Bible? Because they pull it out. It has a passage of scripture. It has a little story that ties the scripture in. It even has a prayer at the end. I mean, that, that's at least the beginning of study. Now, you need to go a little bit further. Build a study library and keep a reading, uh, uh, keep a, a book where you can put your thoughts in, in a little prayer journal and write things down. I do that on my computer. I have 
thousands and thousands of files to where I just sit down and after I read a passage of scripture, I'll just write a page or two of how God has spoke to me. And I can't tell you how many times I've gone back to those in a Bible study or a sermon or just for my own personal reading to where I see God has revealed and how God has worked. If you've ever kept a prayer journal and you've prayed for a long time, go back and read where God answered your prayer. Look at what you wrote. And let that be encouraging. Growth through study needs to be a priority in our life. Because go back to that stool, Chuck, if you don't mind on the slide. For a life lived in grace, we have to have piety. A life in relationship with God where we give God our hearts. A life of study where we grow in grace and the knowledge of, of our Savior, the Lord Jesus Christ. And that study is where we give God our minds. Next week, action. Where we give God our hands and feet. And those three things together will help you build a strong life of grace in Christ. Let's pray. Father, thank you for the opportunity to just listen to learn, to reflect, to sit here and allow the Holy Spirit to speak to our hearts. Amen. For there's not a person here, I, I don't believe, Lord, that doesn't want to know your word, live by your word. And sometimes, Lord, we, we, we go at it harder than others. Our desire at times is stronger. But Lord, I just pray this morning for that person, Lord, that really hasn't made that a priority in their life, to study your word, to seek you through your word, to develop that sense of awe and wonder, to be transformed by your word into more and more of Jesus, and to allow your word to strengthen the endurance for the Christian fight, not to give up, but to keep fighting. Yes, Lord. Lord, there's so much we can learn from your word. You, Start Jesus. in every person here a fire and a desire to study and grow in grace. Amen. In Jesus' name, I pray this prayer. Amen. 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 If you would, you please stand. The altar is open. I'll be glad to pray for you. If you need prayer and you can't come to the altar, if you'll just sort of do the hand wave like... I'll come to you and pray for you. Jane, would you leave? Let's sing together. Lord, I want to be a Christian. Hymn number 402. Mm -hmm.
to be But I'm going to rewrite some words to it. Because it just occurred to me that, Lord, I want to have more wisdom in my mind. In my mind. Lord, Lord I, I want, want to be about more wisdom in, in my mind. mind. Lord, I, I want, want to have to more Jesus, Jesus in my head. And in my feet. You see where this is going? It's, it's going to happen. Yes. Go in peace. May the peace of God go with you in this day. You are dismissed. Amen. God bless all and stay safe. May the Lord bless you. Bye. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you, everyone. Ikaw ang liwanag sa madilim na daan. Ikaw ang siyang tandaw sa aking kinabukasan. Ikaw ang bumabay sa aming pag-aaral. Kahit hirap sa buhay, ikaw ay nakaalala. Jesus Christ, love and care ministry. Kahit di ka nakikita, I always know your love for me. Handang tumulong sa mga nangangilangan. Sa iyong gabay, kami ay may natutunan. Napakabuti ng inyong mga puso. Sa mga tulong nyo, meron yung balik sa dulo. Laki ng aming pasasalamat. Laging dasalang malayo sa kahirapan. Jesus Christ, love and care ministry. Napakabuti ng iyong puso sa pagtulong di na huli. Sana hindi Di magbago ang yung pagkatao Tuloy tuloy mo lang dahil lahat kami saludo Jesus Christ and love and care ministry Napakabuti ng iyong puso sa pagtulong di na huli Sana hindi magbago ang yung pagkatao Tuloy tuloy mo lang dahil lahat kami saludo Sa bawat pagising mo pagtulog Sa katauhan namin ikaw ang humubog Mga pangaral at salita mo sa amin ay tumatap Tinurin mo kami sa mundo na isang anak Di mo pinabayaan sa oras ng kahirapan Binusog din may kagutuman na nararanasan Ikaw ang tanging ina namin kanuman Diyos na ang bahalang magbalik sa iyong kabaitan Mga pangaral mo ang nagsilbi sa aming aral Nagbigay lapis at papel bumubuhit na parang anghel Nagpatayo ng simbahan ko sa pwede naming masilungan Maging takuhan ito'y binabalot ng kadiliman Salita ng Panginoon ko nila Jesus Christ love and good ministry Napakabuti ng iyong puso sa pagtulong di na huli sana hindi magbago ang iyong pagkatao Tuloy tuloy mo lang dahil lahat kami saludo Jesus Christ and love and care ministry Napakabuti ng iyong puso sa pagtulong di na huli Sana hindi magbago ang iyong pagkatao Tuloy tuloy mo lang dahil lahat kami saludo Jesus Christ and love and care ministry Napakabuti ng iyong puso sa pagtulong di na huli Sana hindi magbago ang iyong pagkatao Tuloy tuloy mo lang dahil lahat kami saludo Jesus Christ and love Love and care ministry Napakabuti ng iyong puso Sa pagtulong di na huli Sana hindi magbago Ang iyong pagkatao Tuloy-tuloy mo lang Dahil lahat kami saludo Jesus Christ Love and care ministry